This is Andrew for CollectionDX.com taking a look at the DX Chagokin VF31 Siegfried in Hayate colors. So this is the latest and greatest from uh, Macross Delta and uh, it's also probably the uh, one of the best Bandai Valkyries to come out uh, in a long time. I think they've really stepped up their game uh, with this release. But uh, anyway, let's just go over some of the basics. Uh, like most of the DX Jagokin Valkyries, uh, this is roughly 160 scale. It is about a foot long in fighter mode. Features a good amount of die cast, uh, mostly in all the, the joint work for transformation and all the limbs. Uh, feels quite good in the hands. Locks together uh, pretty solidly, although in the instructions they tell you you should really grab it by the back just because it, it is a little easy to uh, kind of dislodge this part right here. But we'll see that a bit in uh, the transformation. As per usual, die cast landing gear. Um, uh, copious amounts of uh, tampograph markings. They look really clean and crisp uh, on this figure, especially when you're looking at things like Hayate's Delta V number. Uh, the name of the carrier he's based on the Aether, one of the arms of the Elysian, and uh, the logo for Chaos Company. It's all, I actually think that's a Delta Platoon, sorry. But uh, yeah, pretty pretty slick looking. It's uh, quite gorgeous. And I love the fact that Hayate's color scheme looks a lot like a uh, an aerial demonstration team, particularly uh, it reminds me of the aerial knights, or sorry, the Russian knights, not the aerial knights, um, the old... Russian Air Force demonstration team. So as far as gimmicks go, um, well, you can, as always, open up the cockpit, which has a nice, uh, more opaque, kind of glittery gold coating on it. And inside you have a tiny Hayate and Freya. And uh, as with most of these Bondi Valkyries, the rear seat is usually hidden underneath a panel. You just fold it up and then you put the panel back on. But honestly, you know, if you're going to get any of the Macross Delta Valkyries, you're going to want to have that back seat open so you can have your Valkyrie member in there. Uh, Hayate, as per the show, he's not wearing a helmet. And they both look pretty decent as far as, like, little figures designed to, to fill the cockpit. They are pretty detailed as far as, like, the little lines and all that stuff on uh, their flight suits. Coming around the back, speaking of stuff for Valkyrie, uh, there actually are multi-drone monsters on the top of the engine block. All you do is you just sort of pull this back. There is a hinge that raises up out of the, the front here, and then you can slide this whole thing out like that. And there is a bank of non-removable multi-drones just kind of waiting right there. Now, Bandai does give you a pair... Oops, I dropped one going to keep them in the bag for now, of uh, multi-drones that are in scale, so they're, they are tiny little things as you can see. Um, there's no way to actually like display them, uh, they're just little pieces of plastic. They look nice and they're, you know, fairly detailed for their size, but I, I really would have preferred if they had like a little stand or clear arm so you could show them launching off to go and help Valkyrie out. Otherwise, they're just kind of there. But. Uh, Anyways, I'll just put that in, and when you bring it back down, they actually say uh, make sure you keep the, the front part here kind of underneath uh, where it meets the the rest of the the body of the airplane. Um, other than that, uh, we can talk a little bit about how the Siegfried is uh, kind of a uh, well intended to be a descendant of the the YF thirty from Macross 30, the PS3 game. And if you uh, keep up with the Macross Speaker podcasts, or you can read Japanese, um, there actually are interviews. Uh, this one is actually printed in the volume six of the Delta Blu-rays and the liner notes and the booklet. Um, these were supposed to be a lot more similar initially. Uh, this was gonna be just a, mostly like a variation of the YF-30, but it actually it ended up evolving into sort of its own thing here. But uh, actually, it's all for the better, and we'll see that when we get into uh, the transformation. And also a nice thing about the, the two is that the name Siegfried for this is a callback to uh, the protagonist of Macross 30. His name is Rion. His call sign is Siegfried. So that's pretty neat. 
Last thing I'm going to show before we go on into uh, gear walk mode. This is how you fold up the landing gear. Just push that down, stick that in like that. And one cool thing here is that the, the main wheels, the rear wheels, uh, they're actually integrated into the kneecaps or the knee guards for uh, gear walk and battle ride mode, which I think is, is neat. You don't usually see like the landing gear integrated into a part of the robot. It's sort of like they try to keep the the robotiness and the plane this separate, but here they actually do cross over in a nice little dual roll. So what you do is you just move the, um, well you rotate the wheel so that it's facing, uh, well the wheel itself is kind of facing into the the knee guard and just slide that in like that. And as you can see, uh, the VF31, it's very sleek. It definitely uh, goes more on the uh, angular side, especially the legs right here. It's not quite as um, pointy as, uh, say, the YF-30 or um, the uh, YF-29. But again, it's, it's like a really nice design. And of course, if you look at it, you can see that it is, in fact, a, uh, a W for the Chojuku Venus Valkyrie. So we've got the same stand they've been including with these figures for... Oh goodness, um, I think we're looking at close to a decade now. <laughs> um, with uh, the major changes, they made the adapter piece out of clear plastic. It's like, well, it's a functional stand. It's still ugly, but at least it works. Maybe they'll figure out how to make the whole thing out of clear plastic, or at least the arm, but uh, anyway. That is how it looks on the stand, and if you want to have a, a more atmospheric-friendly display, you can still pop Get your finger in there and pop the the intake covers off, and yeah, there is a full intake fan on the underside. And again, one last thing, uh, not included with this figure, but it does have pilot level little hard points, so you can mount uh, under the wing stores like the missile pods included with the VF one seventy one. Uh, armor set. And it's actually kind of funny that uh, the only underwing stores you can get are with VF-171 armor sets for all the different kinds that are out there. But uh, yeah, it just has a little place you can put these. But uh, again, you have to own a whole other set from a whole other Valkyrie to even do that. Alright, so let's uh, move on to Gearwalk mode. So with the transformation, again, it is similar to the YF-30. Um, but the fact that Bandai had to more or less start again with uh, make, translating this design into a toy um, ended up working out for the better because everything is much refined, very improved, and uh, again, probably the best of the Bandai Valkyries out there. So, uh, the way we're going to start is uh, at the back with the feet here. What you can do is uh, move this rear ankle cuff up. It's on a hinge that uh, ends in a ball joint right there. It sometimes pops off, but it goes back on just as easily. You can pull out the foot itself, revealing a kind of, uh, well, a similar uh, looking ankle assembly to a lot of the Frontier Valkyrie designs. So they kind of kept that in Delta, except here it's painted in more of like a, a goldish, almost kind of coppery color. Do that, split the feet, and get ready for gear walk mode. You're going to disengage the tab back here. There's just a set of tabs right there that go into uh, this little slot on the back there. Do that on both sides. And as you bring the legs down, they're going to pivot right here, as they normally do on Macross toys. And what you can do is also pull this out for the full extension and just move this out of the way a little bit. Um, one thing I like about this design especially is there's no like fine points that are going to get mangled as you're moving the legs around. That was a huge problem on uh, a lot of the, the Frontier designs. So again, I'll do that on this side. And you can already see we've got our proper Valkyrie A stance going on. And uh, there's actually not only a joint here to put the legs out like that, little um, common knee swivel, uh, there's also a swivel right up here at the, the gearwalk joint itself, so you can get 
more screen accurate style of A stance. So you just kind of mess with both of those and here we go. So for the arms on this design, they are actually integrated into the wings themselves. And what you're going to do is just get your finger in there, get it under this block right here, and just pull it up till it clicks. You can, and then you have to uh, pull this cover up. They actually show you doing this first in the instructions, but I find it's easier if you just uh, leverage it up a bit using this part. So again, do that on both sides and get that up out of the way. Bring this part of the wing up, fold the panel that hides the hand back inside, and here you go. We've got the whole forearm right here. And when you're bringing this part here, this is what becomes the shoulder, out. Just be careful of this tip here. It's only like the real big misstep as far as the transformation goes. So just kind of push it up with your thumb as you're bringing this whole thing forward. So let's do that on both sides. All right, and here we go. We've got the hand, we've got the little uh, combat knife, and we also have the, the gun tonfa. I'll bring this thing back down like that. The wings there. And to make the forearms out of this little uh, thing of panels here, what you do is you fold this block up like that, and it just tabs in place. You can fold this back and around and then fold the hand out, and then also this, you're not going to want to put it all the way yet. Uh, just watch here, this actually, this is the bottom of uh, the forearm right there, uh, this part. So you're going to want to push this like that, and then as you rotate this all the way around, you're going to see this stripe here, it uh, lines up with the, the stripe on the elbow joint. And then you just pull this out, similar to the YF-30, but again, kind of watch for where parts might rub against each other um, during the transformation. Pull that out. Do the same thing on this side. And again, I will show you how the forearm is formed out of all this stuff. Bring up a little block here, uh, tab it in place, put the gun ton for the back, Rotate forearm and just flip this around. Do this halfway until you finally bring this around. And here we go. The Siegfried in Gearwalk mode. Looking pretty good, pretty properly uh, Macrossy as it is. And uh, since Kawamori has been sort of uh, really pushing this idea lately, there's also a weapon pod in the back. And now what you're going to want to do with this is you want to bring it down a little bit before you flip this part up. It actually does on the bottom here um, lock in place. There's a little clip right there so it keeps it uh, nice and stable for fighter mode or if you just don't want it out in Garrowak mode. So you just bring it up out like that. Bring the view up to match, and we'll focus on this for a second. So to get this to move forward for attack mode, you just untab the front part of the integrated gun pod. You can see there's a little tab that just goes in the back here, and you just move this outward like that. And here we go. We've got the gun pod, and we've got the multi-drone charger right there. They're both on their own little independent hinges. This whole thing can move around. This whole assembly has multiple hinges to put it in all different kinds of positions. And uh, all you really have to do to finish this up is with this part right here, uh, the gun pod plugs into this little moving uh, platform right there towards the back. You can grab this and then extend the stock just like that. And this, uh, the front part of the gun pod, it angles up just a little bit. I've not been able to keep it, you know, from coming undone as I do it. But as you can see, this will come up. It kind of just increases the, the size of the gap between this part of the gun pod and a little barrel up there. And you can also move this little uh, bit like that in and out. For the multi-drone charger, you just pull this out like that. 
and spread the little um, parts of the antenna right there. The middle part here you want it obviously in as you're putting this back for a uh, fighter mode. And just get your finger in there just enough. It gives you just enough space to get the middle part out. And here we go. We got the turret, we've got the, the gun, the multi drone charger, and you've also got the gun tonfas right there. Um, unfortunately, there are no uh, included like sh energy shield, like pinpoint barrier things that Hayate uses in the show. I would have liked that. I mean, there's even the hard point right there. You could easily just stick them on like that. Uh, so maybe we'll see another accessory set will include those. And to finish off with gear walk mode, here's the stand, here's the adapter for gear walk mode. It's pretty much the same as fighter mode. Uh, the top part here is made to clip around what will become the crotch of the batteroid. So just kind of get it in there. Clips in nice and sturdy and you've got your VF-31 in gear walk mode on its display stand. Now, as I mentioned before, the, the kind of overall theme of the VF-31 is uh, refinement. And with the transformation to battery mode, you're going to see where um, everything that they've, that both Kawamori and the Bandai team have learned uh, making the all the previous Valkyries have really just kind of come to fruition. And uh, they're doing a lot of things that Boy, I wish they had done originally on some of the earlier ones. So, uh, to start off uh, with the nose cone, you just kind of twist it down like that. Come down to the underside, and you want to disengage this piece here. This is what's going to become the, the cod piece, if you will, in uh, batteroid mode. It just has a couple of tabs that go in pretty tightly. You can just get your finger in here. They put enough of a gap to let you get in there. Pull this forward to expose the hinge a little bit. It will come out if you pull harder. Uh, it just goes back in just as easily. And the part that excites me is that there are these little gray, I think they're palm plastic, um, locking brackets. And those are what are going to help keep this thing together in batteroid mode. So you do that, you start to bring this out. So you have the whole uh, bottom section there. And then you pull this out. This is kind of why uh, there's a bit of a gap in this section if you don't push everything together uh, all the way. So you pull this out to expose this little double hinge in here before you do anything uh, with the upper body. They actually point out in the instructions, you know, Make sure you do this or you might break something. But uh, it, that part doesn't seem terribly fragile, so it uh, seems fine on my toy. So as you're playing around with this, uh, what you can do is you want to bring this part down. It's going to point upward in batteroid mode. You're going to unlock the cockpit block like that and leave it like this for now. And as we go underneath to uh, the head section here, uh, we're also going to notice there's a whole waist joint like that, so uh, that can do, that can move around mostly for batteroid mode, well, only for batteroid mode. So we've got, here's the underside of the neck section, and this right here is basically like a neck fill-in piece. And for fighter mode and gear walk mode, you want the neck section position so that this part is as close to what would be the bottom side of the fighter as possible. Because for battery mode, what you're going to do is take this little kind of neck side cover section, you're going to bring it up and around, and it's actually going to feed through these little slots on the side on either side of the head. Um, in the instructions, they, talk, they do have a nice picture, which I will try to link in the video. Uh, so everyone can see it. Just remember when you're going back to fighter mode, you want this thing out like that in the gap between the back plate and uh, the underside of the next section, sort of the collar section. Basically it goes into this spot right here. Again, that's for fighter mode and gear walk mode. So for batteroid mode, you just bring this whole thing out, 
and there it is, this little next section. It's going to go up as you, you're going to want to bring some of this stuff out and around, and then you can push the, the next section to start to bring the head itself up. And uh, what's going to happen, whether you want to or not, is uh, these little fold receptors here, they actually do fold up out of the way uh, to give the head clearance. Oops. Yeah. To give the head clearance to come up. Uh, the neck is on a ball joint, as you can see. It does like to, to pop off, although it's just because it's a little bit um, loose. So you're going to bring that up, and well, this at least lets me show you how everything needs to go. And you're going to push the next section so that this is as far back against this part of the, the main body as possible. Also bring the little chest cover up. Just kind of do it like that. And as you bring everything up and around like this, this is all going to settle into a nice place. And these little uh, brackets here are just going to lock right into this part of the figure and that will nicely just kind of keep everything together at one spot. Let me pop the head back on. Again, it's it's not hard to keep the head attached uh, as you're transforming it. Just uh, don't be reaching around a camera at the same time. And you come around to the back and here's a thing that I really wish that the rest of the Frontier Valkyries had. There's a set of supports right here and that's what keeps the back plate level uh, in fighter mode and gear walk mode. And what you do is you just take these and you just rotate them down like that on both sides. And when you bring the whole backpack down, the tabs here are just going to go into the supports and also uh, this little gap right here is going to lock into this little block on the back here. So you're going to hear that all just kind of nicely uh, lock in as everything comes down. Oh, well, it has locked in and it's already uh, nice and tight, but I just need to kind of wiggle that. Yeah, you actually might want to just do the top locks first. And then you bring everything out and down. Make sure this is all good. And yeah. That's pretty much it. You uh, you have the whole torso locked together, and you can also bring up the the backpack turret, fold the tail fins down, fold the the wing tips up, straighten out the legs, collapse the ankles. That's what at least they show you doing for for Batroid mode. So do that. Do that. And they also want you to collapse the, the sliding knee joint just like by a couple clicks. So it's at least one click out, which is hard to do. But anyways, there we go. So here we are. We got the VF31 in Batteroid mode. So the DX Jagokin VF31 in Batteroid mode uh, benefits from two major things that, again, I wish previous Bandai Valkyries did. For one thing, this torso is locked together. Uh, it's not going to come apart until you take it apart. Uh, their VF25 toys, the 27, 29, and even the YF30, the torso had a couple maybe bits that sort of locked it together, or maybe it was just gravity that kept the thing together. Here, you've got these little flip-out tabs, you've got the little supports in the back, and again, this is one nice, solid torso. Also, you're noticing I can just pick this thing up and plop it down, you know, no problem. And that's because they finally gave it, gave uh, their big Valkyries back ratcheting hip joints. Oh my goodness, this is, this is a revelation because now the thing is nice and stable. You actually just, uh, you probably saw, you just pull it out to allow it some space to move. And then you can also push it back in to kind of lock it in place. 
So yeah, um, this is huge. Now your Valkyrie, even with its, uh, you know, oversized, but you know, nice and functional backpack can stand in different poses without you having to uh, use some kind of tightening thing on the, the hip ball joints. So yeah, that's huge. That's gonna help out a ton once we get to um, seeing these with their associated super pack sets and armor packs and all that stuff. So uh, again, I mentioned it has a nice waist joint. Uh, the nose actually can turn a little bit as you're moving the waist joint. And if you want to make sure you're not scraping the nose, you just move the uh, cod piece out of the way a bit. It's got a nice, like, tons tons of joints in uh, the head. There's the ball joint under there. It's on its own little hinged uh, stalk like that. You have the moving head laser like that. It's a, a very, very poseable uh, Macross toy. You have a couple of different joints going on here uh, inside the, the, sh the shoulder block. You have this whole bit here that actually goes up and down. You have uh, this bit right on the, the upper part of the shoulder that can move out independently of the main blue colored block right there. Um, you got double jointed elbow. It's a pretty good bend. And you got bicep swivel. You saw all the joints on the, the backpack itself already. Uh, one thing that is a little weird on this because it doesn't have the ball jointed hips is um, this part does not uh, twist. The twist is actually here. You can use that from uh, Garwalk mode to give it a bit more angle on that. I mean, this does go in and out, but again, this does not twist itself. So you're kind of playing with this as you're getting the toy into uh, different kinds of action poses, you know. And again, as long as you balance it correctly, it does stand up pretty well, even in kind of more extreme kinds of poses. Um, so as far as the hands go, so you got ball jointed wrist, pretty standard, and things like ball jointed ankles and all that. So these hands, they kind of suck. Uh, they do have an actual like double joint in uh, the main block of fingers, so you can curl them like that. It's a ball jointed uh, thumb and a hinged trigger finger. That's kind of cool. Unfortunately, if you want to say take out the, the little knife that's uh, just tabbed in. Oops, oh, that went flying. Oh, it's just tabbed in underneath the the arm shield like that. Uh, it, these do a decent job of holding the knife. They do not do a terribly good job at holding the gun pod. And the gun pod, when you take it off like that, you can see basically uh, the back part of uh, the shoulder stock just kind of clicks in there like that. So I'm going to actually fold up the weapon pod, much like they do in the series, and you can just kind of let it chill out in the back here. There's not really a set place for it, but if you've seen the show, you kind of get, and it's like, oh, it's always kind of going like that uh, when they're not using it. So, you know, just kind of get that. Come on here. He does stand a lot better uh, when his feet aren't on a smooth surface like my photo setup. So you got that. You got the movable hands and the handle for the gun actually does hinge outward like that. And eh, again, it's it's not great as far as the grip that this thing gets on the gun. Um, I would recommend just using one of the many, many handsets this figure comes with. I, I just kind of get frustrated and just pull out one of the extra hands. Of which there are 12! That seems like a lot, even for Bandai Valkyries. So yeah, you got your <laughs> a trigger, a hand with the trigger finger. Uh, two of these, there actually are two sets of hands for holding the gun pod. Uh, one has the, the wrist uh, stock, a little ball joint here, angled down for a bit. Uh, for specific kind of poses. And there's also a set 
that just has the, the ball joint straight out. So I'm going to go with the, the straight out ball joint. Actually, I'm going to uh, show you how to get this in there. You would think that you could actually just like thread this up and through, but unfortunately the way this is designed, part of the palm actually has like an angled piece, a uh, triangular piece of uh, plastic like in the gap here. So really the best way to do it is just to kind of feed the, the thinnest part of this uh, around uh, the kind of the grip here and just pry the the fingers open just a bit. There we go. You start to do it the right way. It'll actually work for you. So yeah. And get that in there. And uh, try not to break the handle as you're you're doing all this. But there we go. So yeah. Um, you also have to pull this down enough so that you leave this tab right here exposed. So there, now you can get this in there nicely and start getting your, your BF31 into some nice poses. I'm going to grab open hand to put on this side and here. So again, very poseable Valkyrie toy. Uh, it benefits immensely from the ratcheted hip joints. Of course, you've still got the same like standard stuff like the ratcheting knee joints and the, the pull-out joints in the, the ankles like that. But still, this is a really, really nice uh, Valkyrie toy, especially for the one that's not really the uh, kind of the star attraction that's going to be the upcoming uh draken 3 from the windy boys um yeah the vf31 is it's a very very nice uh valkyrie toy i i really enjoy this figure um all the refinements and the transformation just make it so much easier to to handle than a lot of the other bandai valkyries uh it's it's just fun to to actually use and move it around um, and again, you've got the, the whole stand assembly. The only thing you need to know is that it's going to go around this section here of the, of the, uh, main body that's still kind of hanging around. And, uh, what happens is, uh, this thing kind of gets up underneath. It's hard to do, unfortunately. So you just kind of get this thing up underneath here, and there you go. Now it's up on the stand. But honestly, the stand, it's not great. It's really just for, hey, you want it to be in the air. There it is. So uh, yeah, taking it off the stand, because it's too cool for that. But, uh, anyway, um, yeah, so we're gonna be seeing at least four or maybe five or six other versions of this toy out there because you have Death of Platoon, and then you have the mass production version, the VF31A Kairos, coming out at some point. Uh, but yeah, this is a uh, very solid, this is an extremely solid base for uh, modern Macross toys, or Bandai Macross toys in general, and uh, it's just, I'm really happy with this toy. Uh, I think it turned out great, and uh, it makes me really excited to see what uh, Bandai's gonna be doing with the, the Draken 3. But, Anyways, this has been Andrew for CollectionDX.com. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my fellow Collection DX reviewer, uh, Zane, for hooking me up with the pre-order, because uh, you know Bondi Valkyrie pre-orders, or Bondi toy pre-orders in general, boy, they can be hard to get, especially if the toy cannot be sold outside of Japan, technically. Uh, anyway, these go for, uh, their MSRP is uh, 20,000 yen, which at this point in time is about $170. Typical price for uh, Bandai's DX Chugokin Valkyries. Very nice figure, just really an excellent thing overall. And uh, again, I'm actually really impressed with it. Uh, this is probably one of my most favorite uh, Valkyrie toys in a good long while. So this is Andrew for CollectionDX.com. Signing off and saying, well, just remember, now that we got Freya in the cockpit, we're always dancing in September. <laughs>